Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to make you wait any longer. We so appreciate you being with us today for our annual, well, I guess this is really our semi-annual state of the city. Uh, we have some important information to share with you today, so we didn't want to wait until March again. Um, let me introduce myself first. I am Cindy Bonnier. I am the CEO of the Fremont Chamber of Commerce. And today uh, we are sponsored by Facebook, Washington Hospital, Kaiser Permanente, Robeson Homes, and Pacific Commons. And I just want to point out that these folks have really been supportive of the chamber during this difficult time, and we really appreciate their support in hosting these kinds of events, whether it be in person or virtual. Um, and just a heads up that we are looking forward to a March in-person event, and I'm really excited that um, 2022, we have a lot of in-person things planned. So um, we're excited to get back to business as usual. Um, with that, I'm not going to hold up any longer. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our mayor. Um, although she doesn't really need an introduction, we all, she's out in the community so much, I feel like she's everyone's friend. So um, she has been our mayor. She's in our, her second term, uh, almost into six years. And so ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mayor Lily May. Good afternoon. Thank you, Cindy, and to the members of the Chamber of Commerce and our sponsors for supporting this today's address. So let me begin. During last year's State of the City, I opened my address by speaking one second. By speaking on the unparalleled challenges that our community members, business owners, and local government have faced during the global pandemic. While we've made much progress toward combating the effects of COVID, the need to reimagine, restore, and recover remains. The landscape of our nation continues to shift, and our local governments must continue to evolve with changing needs and priorities for our community. The City of Fremont continues to lead the way in these efforts, taking steps to support local businesses and residents that have been economically affected, fighting climate change by initiating innovative programs, strengthening Fremont's infrastructure against natural disasters, creating new events and initiatives that promote diversity and inclusion, and evolving how all city departments serve our public. I'm pleased to share with you today some of the highlights this year and what we're looking forward to as we move into 2022. Before I begin, I'd like to welcome and recognize my colleagues on the Fremont City Council, Vice Mayor Yang Xiao, Council Member Teresa Kang, Council Member Rick Jones, Council Member Jenny Casson, Council Member Raj Salwan, and Council Member Teresa Cox. By partnering with the city's leadership team, we continue to serve Fremont and provide support to our residents and businesses. And speaking of city leadership team, I am thrilled to announce two recent appointments this month. First, meet Karina Shackelford, Fremont's new city manager. Karina is a dynamic leader in our city organization with a proven track record and over 20 years of experience in local government. She's led to complex projects, effectively implemented the council's policy direction, overseen the public works, community services, and information technology services departments, and has built positive relationships throughout the organization and the community she grew up in. When we began discussion to select Fremont's next leader, the council was decisive and unanimous in recommending Karina. We believe she will continue Fremont's tradition of innovation fiscal sustainability, and addressing issues the community cares about. And meet Police Chief Sean Washington, who was recently sworn in as Fremont's eighth top cop, taking the torch from well-respected Chief Peterson. He brings 24 years of experience serving the Fremont community to his new leadership role. Our community is invited to a virtual event to celebrate Chief Washington on November 18th. Following up on several months of community meetings and interactions, he rolled out a police chief transition plan last month that prioritizes enhancing community relationships, trust and police legitimacy, assessing um, organizational effectiveness and efficiency, reviewing policies and procedures, providing additional professional development and training opportunities, increasing internal communication, team building and employee wellness, and supporting city initiatives. On the topic of city initiatives, our city council identified priorities in the beginning of 2021 that would guide us as we continue to make decisions for Fremont. These areas of emphasis were first and foremost tending to 
the financial health of the city through a responsible budget and increased tax base, continued COVID-19 responses, addressing homelessness, and finally neighborhood improvement as I recount all that we've accomplished this year. You'll see how all these priorities are woven with care into each program, policy, and solution we put into place. At the onset of the pandemic, unemployment in Fremont reached over 11%, with over 12,000 residents unemployed. The number of small businesses in the East Bay reduced by over 30%, and the city faced a significant general fund budget deficit. We had our work cut out for us. Faced with this challenge, the city put in place an economic recovery strategy to enable Fremont businesses and workers in the community to respond, recover, and thrive. The strategy focuses on three pillars, supporting small business recovery, leveraging inclusive workforce development opportunities, and helping rebuild a resilient tax base for our city. Over the last year, the city has implemented many aspects of this strategy, and businesses large and small have resumed hiring. Today, more than 6,000 people have been rehired and consumer spending is up double digits from pre-pandemic levels. Put simply, our businesses are investing on the strength of Fremont's future. We also continue popular programs such as Gift Fremont, which incentivize the purchase of gift cards for local businesses and Papa Patio, which allow businesses to create vibrant outdoor dining spaces in fact, these outdoor spaces will be here to stay as city staff works over the next few months to develop standards in the zoning ordinance that allow restaurants to create permanent outdoor dining areas through a simplified permitting process. And continuing our support of local restaurants, we partnered with the Fremont Chamber of Commerce to launch Dine Fremont program, offering restaurants a participating, um, a chance to participants a chance to win restaurant gift cards, and a grand prize throughout the month of September. Local protections for residents and small businesses also continued with the City of Fremont's anti-gouging ordinance, commercial eviction moratorium, other city emergency orders still in effect and in line with county ordinances. We also introduced Keep Fremont House, a rental assistance program earlier this year, which has helped 583 households at risk of facing housing instability through the distribution of more than 8.1 million federal US Department of Treasury stimulus funds. From leading COVID-19 testing efforts in the city early in the pandemic, Fremont firefighters remained committed to fighting the disease by partnering with Haller's Pharmacy to provide over 22,000 Pfizer vaccinations to community members in Fremont and throughout Alameda County. We also partnered throughout the year with Bay Area Community Health and Asian Health Services to host testing clinics at various locations throughout Fremont, including Tri-City, Bay Area Community Health, Liberty Street Clinic, Mission Valley ROP, FUSD, Fremont Family Resource Center, Irvington Community Center, as well as the Central Park where Bay Area Community Health has also added a vaccination clinic. Moving now to the city budget, the COVID pandemic and related public health restrictions have substantially reduced our city's general fund and recreation fund revenues. The hardest hit revenues include sales tax, hotel and business tax, and recreation fees. Fortunately, the federal government has provided the city with opportunities to restore services that were reduced due to the pandemic related revenue losses through the American Rescue Plan Act, state and local fiscal recovery funds. The city has been allocated 22.1 million of fiscal recovery funds in this current fiscal year and will receive a second allocation of the same amount in mid 2022. In June, our council adopted the fiscal year 2021-22 operating budget which stabilizes our recreation fund with 2.1 million of the fiscal recovery funds and uses the balance of 20 million to restore services in our general fund. We'll apply the second installment of fiscal recovery fund to maintain general fund services over the next two fiscal years as our revenues recover. More recently in August, we were able to take advantage of the historically low interest rates to refinance 20.6 million of the city's general obligation bonds. The savings from the refinancing will result in a general obligation bond property tax reduction of approximately 12% 
for the city's residents and businesses, or 4.1 million in net present value savings. Despite the changing economic landscape, one thing hasn't changed, our commitment to fiscal responsibility. And for the 24th consecutive year, the City of Fremont was awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Officers Association. I'm so very proud of the staff that have consistently made this possible and the work they put in to make sure our budget serves as a policy document, a financial plan, an operations guide, and a communications device. While there was much hardship that stemmed from COVID-19 pandemic, we also had a lot to celebrate this year. We recognize the need to create more gathering spaces in our city and are proud of opening three new city facilities for our community this year. People of all ages now can safely connect with one another rear round at the downtown event center and plaza, the Lila Bringhurst Community Park, and for those 55 and up, the Age Well Center at South Fremont. Turning our attention now to our unhoused population, we reported on the success of the Fremont Housing Navigation Center that opened in 2020. The agency provides a clean, safe, and calm environment to allow participants to focus on finding stable permanent housing. Within the first year, the center has served 70 individuals, 25 are still in residence, and another 37 have transitioned into alternative housing or shelter arrangements. The HNC is just one initiative underway in Fremont aimed to alleviate homelessness. The Safe Parking Host Site Program was approved in July. The program permits faith-based sites to host Fremont's community members who are living in vehicles on site overnight. Participants in this program will have access to clean water, restrooms, health services, and housing assistance. I'd like to now talk about a few of our city's technological advances that are furthering our smart city initiatives, starting with improving traffic flow on our streets. Several years ago, we conceptualized a traffic signal modernization program to use technology to better detect real-time traffic conditions and then have smart traffic signal control equipment adapt accordingly. The result is more efficient traffic flow, less waiting at red lights, and faster response times for our emergency vehicles. I'm pleased to share that we have a major signal modernization project starting soon on nine miles of Fremont Boulevard that will be complete next summer. Also for residents and businesses needing a building permit, we have upgraded our citizen access online permitting portal with a new look, improved navigation and better functionality for users. Telecommunication and reliable wireless connectivity have also proven to be essential as we recover from the effects of COVID-19 and the popularity of remote work increases. Last month, Verizon expanded its 5G network for Fremont customers by deploying small cell infrastructure to improve speed and reduce gaps in data coverage via a master license agreement with the city. This deployment is the first of many steps to improve connectivity and build a robust citywide network that enables advanced technology in Fremont through our city small cells project. And we're partnering with Magellan Advisors to develop a broadband master plan to ensure robust broadband is available to enable economic development and smart city initiatives. Visit our city website to participate in the survey. Fremont also celebrated the launch of the Earn and Learn pilot program, which achieved two goals. First, it helped evolve ma manufacturing, attract much needed new talent, and second, it helped minority job seekers affected by COVID-19 layoffs start a career in advanced manufacturing. We continue to see technology and life science companies coming to and expanding in Fremont, which is a testament to our city's exceptional resources and openness to innovation. For example, Fremont's skilled workforce and manufacturing expertise are putting our city at the forefront of the energy storage revolution. In this year, alone, we have welcomed news that homegrown Innovix has begun production of 3D lithium ion batteries at its Fremont plant, which will eventually be capable of producing 45 million batteries per year, as well as Enervenue, a utility scale battery storage company that moved its headquarters to Fremont and is constructing its first manufacturing plant here. 
And of course, Tesla, who celebrated its inaugural battery day in Fremont last year and has since completed one of the world's largest and most advanced battery production lines in Fremont. Home to additional clean tech innovators like Enphase, Bloom Energy, and Next Tractor, Fremont has become the global leader in the next wave of clean tech innovation. Also, Fremont based startup Pony.ai started its driverless autonomous vehicle testing after receiving authorization from the California Department of Motor Vehicles in June. Tests were conducted on streets in South Fremont and could evolve into a robo taxi service that runs between several areas in Warm Springs, including the BART Station, Pacific Commons, and job sites. Life sciences is Fremont's largest growing industry. Since the onset of the pandemic, the number of life sciences companies in Fremont grew from 115 to over 150 companies, creating thousands of new jobs in research and manufacturing and building a resilient local supply chain in Fremont. Among the new additions include pharmaceutical manufacturer, national resilience, and personalized cancer treatment provider, personalis. 2021 also brought the expansion of biotherapeutic biotherm manufacturer Boeinger Ingelheim. BI's workforce has grown to over 700 employees with a median educational attainment of associate's degree and a median salary of over 100,000, providing critical middle income jobs for our community. Although the pandemic delayed some business initiatives worldwide, Fremont's economy remained robust and steady with business investments increasing in all of the city's industries, especially manufacturing. Next up is the city work I'm most proud of, as it up, it's helps to uphold and honor diversity, equity, and inclusion by creating events and initiatives that prioritize fair treatment, equal opportunity, and respect. Throughout the year, we engaged in many active initiatives to do just this, including joining the Cities of Opportunity cohort led by the National League of Cities, where I personally serve as the chair of the Mayor's Ta Education Task Force to better address inequities by providing and developing comprehensive and equitable policies and practices. To kick off the summer, we launched Active Fremont Walk, Bike, Hike, a wellness campaign in partnership with Washington Hospital, Healthcare System, East Bay Regional Park District, and Regional Parks Foundation. The events not only encourage community members to get outside and prioritize their health, but they also introduce new neighbors to one another, strengthen relationships, and showcased our diverse community. Fremont is now one of the Bay Area's leading cities for protected and safe and innovative bikeways, and was recently recognized as a silver level bike-friendly city by the League of American Bicyclists. We also received a 90% grade by the Municipal Equity Equality Index, which measures the way in which local cities support LGBTQ plus community members. As we look at ways to increase our score, Police Chief Washington has approved adding more diversity to the Chief's Advisory Committee. With our world becoming more connected, we know that events happening across the globe can deeply affect our own diverse community. Fremont is home to one of the largest Afghan communities in the Bay Area. In August, our council released a statement addressing the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. But we know that actions always speak louder than words. That's why our Human Services Department established the Afghan Help Fund. This fund will provide direct assistance to Afghan refugees covering housing, food, clothing, and other needed services. I'm thrilled to report that we have raised over $290,000 due to the national media coverage and the generous donations of our own community and those from all over the United States. In addition, we are finalizing policies and procedures in accordance with the Racial and Identity Profiling Act of 2015, known as RIPA, intended to improve racial and identity sensitivity in law enforcement. This law requires reporting on time, date, location, and reason for police detention, in addition to reporting the perceived ethnicity, age, and gender of the person stopped or detained. The police department will begin collecting stop data for the Department of Justice on January 1st, 2022, when the law goes into effect 
for law enforcement agencies of our size. Art is another way we're showcasing and celebrating diversity. This year, we incorporated Braille and Fremont's own history into our city's box art program installations, as well as installed new art in South Fremont. And by the end of this year, our city will leverage the census 2020 data to redraw our district lines to reflect how our city has changed. We will do our best to ensure that voices are underrepresented communities are heard and listened to through our public hearings, written testimonies and map proposals. Building on the core value of accessibility, this year we also launched Fremont's Open Data Hub, a one-stop shop for all city resources, including maps, data sets, permit portals, websites, and external and internal resources. Building off retired Chief Peterson's Engage Fremont, community conversations on policing and race that began in June of 2020, we published a comprehensive report that summarized the main community concerns and suggestions and reaffirmed FPD's commitment to our community. Chief Washington ensured his transition plan addressed the recommendations in the Engage Fremont report. One large action that resulted from these community conversations was expanding the mission of the Mobile Evaluation Team, commonly known as MET, to include outreach, mental health assessments, and referrals to social services for those experiencing homelessness. In addition to this expanded mission, the Human Services Department and Police Department worked together to create an additional crisis intervention specialist position. This enhancement will increase our ability to conduct field outreach and engage and meet unhoused persons where they are to provide additional resources. Another Engage Fremont focus was to reassess the school resource officer program in partnership with the school district. The SRO unit works toward ensuring a safe learning environment for students, teachers, and school administrators by providing immediate response to some medical emergencies and incidents of violence or crime. This past June, we negotiated a new program terms and are currently in the process of finalizing an MOU and policy. In addition, the police department enhanced SRO training, developed alternative police uniform options, began tracking SRO daily activity and collecting data on referrals to diversion and emergency incidents, among a host of other things. To keep the dialogue with residents and businesses and other community members going, FPD is establishing an annual community survey. I encourage all residents to use their voice and participate in this survey by November 5th so that the police department can continue to advance its service-oriented community-based poli policing model. Circling back to Chief Washington's goal of aligning with city initiatives, the police department announced the deployment of a new Tesla Model Y patrol vehicle last month. The latest addition to the city department's hybrid and electric fleet of over 40 vehicles. The highly favorable results of our patrol EV pilot program set the foundation for our city to continue investing in clean technology as we identify additional long-term and economical ways to be more sustainable and meet Fremont's goal of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 55% by 2030. Moving now to the Fremont Fire Department's efforts this year. Not only did the department defend against fires in city limits, but they also provided mutual aid assistance for wildfires and other natural disasters throughout our state and nation. While our firefighters responded to many calls for help, there are some that stand out, such as assisting the Adventist Health Bakersfield Hospital as part of the multiple Cal OES request for paramedics and EMTs staffing hospitals due to the surge, surges in COVID-19 cases and enhancing search and rescue capacity in response to Hurricane Ida, as well as Dixie and Monument fires. We thank our firefighter team, especially their families, for making personal sacrifices to serve both Fremont and other communities in their time of need. Later this month, the Fremont Fire Department will wrap up its recruitment for lateral firefighters, both paramedics and EMTs, focusing on those who bring diversity to the team to better represent the demographic makeup of Fremont, including women, 
and those from various cultural backgrounds. The new Fire Academy will kick off this February. The Fremont Fire Department remains at the forefront of utilizing technology to serve our community. In 2003, the department led the way in Alameda County to implement the first generation of mechanical CPR devices. And this year, firefighters participated in a two month field study on the fourth generation of Lucas 3.1 chest compression systems. Shown to be safe and effective, Fremont is the first in the county to use the devices during sudden cardiac arrest responses. Today, over 6 million Californians participated in the annual Great Shakeout Earthquake Drill that took place this morning at 1021 on the third Thursday in October. If you didn't have a chance to participate, you can still organize a drill. As one of the safest cities in America, we practice personal preparedness year round and encourage you to keep up your personal preparedness efforts. Finally, both Fremont Fire and Fremont Police, along with other local public safety organizations commemorated the 20th anniversary of 9-11 by hosting a remembrance ceremony at the Central Park Performance Pavilion. The event served as a somber memory of a day that forever changed us all, yet also a beautiful reminder of the connection, resiliency, and strength of our community. Looking on our past, we build to the future. Fremont will continue to spearheading various initiatives to improve the lives and operations of our community members and organizations as well as make a positive impact on the environment. Starting with the Parks and Mas Recreation Master Plan, we are currently gathering data on our city's facilities and programs to better provide equitable levels of service and meet future demands, as well as establish priorities and funding strategies. Next, the Council adopted the Trails Strategy Plan, which provides an overarching framework for implementing future trail projects. But the work doesn't stop there. We are also developing an urban forest management plan to achieve a long range vision for our community's forests. Whether it's sustainability, recreation, or building our local economy, we have continued to show remarkable effort in several initiatives that contribute to the overall quality of life for Fremont residents, including updating the climate action plan to include a wide variety of measures to help us meet the city's new goal to reach carbon neutrality by 2045. We look forward to releasing the 2.0 plan sometime next spring. Becoming a 2021 Beacon Leadership and Award Innovation Award winner for our innovations in clean energy, as well as a 2021 Beacon Vanguard of winner for achieving platinum levels in greenhouse gas reductions, energy and gas savings, and overall sustainability best practices and committing to the growth of our businesses. In 2021, new leases were signed by Din Ding Dumpling House, Banter Bookshop, and Decalash to locate in our newly renovated downtown Fremont. These businesses will join recently opened plant-based raw ASF restaurant and new pizzeria and tap house Sliver Pizza area on track to open next spring. To address the need for affordable housing related to market rate housing production and to foster an adequate supply of housing in Fremont for all persons at all economic levels, our council is currently in the process of adopting revised in lieu fees while maintaining a hybrid option and inclusionary requirements. I'd like to now touch on our legislative priorities. We've heard you and we may, are making sure your concerns are being heard at the federal level as well. We were visited by both Congress members, Kana and Swalwell this past August. Stemming from these visits, Fremont is being considered for funding under the Congressional Community Funding Project and designation processes. If awarded, these funding will go towards four projects noted on the slide in the federal fiscal year 2022. While we continue to navigate the long-term effects of the pandemic, we do so confidently working towards a promising future. Through it all, Fremont has come out stronger. We prioritized the health of our community members, furthered our position as a smart city, supported our local businesses, 
and continue developing initiatives to address economic recovery, homelessness, diversity, and more. I'm excited to build on our tremendous work in the coming year. We remain committed to navigating the challenges that arise, and I am hopeful that our journey together will result in Fremont's continued triumphs. Thank you for your time today. And there is additional information that's being provided with QR codes that will, and also additional notes that will be coming out. And hopefully those will be able to help if there are additional questions. Um, thank you, Mayor May. It's really nice to hear so many things coming to fruition and all the progress that we're making as a community. So really appreciate you sharing the information with us. Um, the mayor has said that she will take your questions. So if you would like to post them in the chat room, we will be posing those questions to her. We do have a couple um, for you to start with, Mayor. Um, sure. One, to address the homelessness. And um, you did answer some of this, but um, I, I guess the biggest concern in this question is, is that there's... Um, some areas that are getting piled with trash, old RVs, and um, it, it's turning into what appears to be a blighted area. And there's a lot of concern around that. Is there something that can be done to address that issue? Well, just to let people know, we are aware and we're concerned also about the impacts. Right now, we are currently still in an eviction moratorium. We do have code enforcement that is able to go out and tag and notify people but there is a time frame that we must allow people before we can move some of their um, items. And we are working with our code enforcement and our police department to work through this process. But we are also in compliance with the county's eviction moratorium. And we are also looking at on the county level, I know they've been looking at some of the challenges and questions on a task force for illegal dumping. Thank you. And I know that crime has been a big source of frustration um, during this COVID time, especially. And there was a question that addresses um, that it seems that criminals are apprehended and then set loose so quickly to commit more crimes. How do we keep these repeat offenders off the street? Well, I think that many of us share some of these similar concerns and we're working again um, with our police department, but more importantly, with some of our local governments and legislators about some of the policies. Um, there's a lot of concern on trying to support people for recidivism, but we also are recognizing that right now when some of these laws have changed, they have directly impacted some of the ability to um, hold people and as well as to be able to address the concerns. So I think it's important for us to share and those sentiments and to be able to echo and share the um, impact, especially to our legislators, both on the state and also on the, the local levels. Okay, um, there is a question regarding the Vision Zero traffic safety program, and they're just asking for a quick update on that. Um, well, I think the best way, because unfortunately uh, I would have to go into a lot more detail, we are continually to look at Vision Zero and the impacts of that and how we have been recognized in terms of unusual in terms of um, some of the things that we're seeing from people now starting to reopen and return back to work. We have that information on our website and it's part of our efforts. And I invite you as the public to also look at that information as well as partner with our mobility commission. That's part of why when we did the Act of Fremont, we wanted people to see some of the different changes that have been happening. The past couple of years have done things like upgraded our street lights, our LED lights. So Fremont got brighter as a city. We mean literally, not just the people. And then we also have been implementing some of the safe routes to school and working in partnership with the school district, Alameda County Transportation Commission and other areas to address some of those simple concerns that can help promote better safety and mobility um, for our residents and our community members, especially our students. Thank I'd you. I'd be happy to share those resources. Oh, great, thank you. Um, there's a question regarding um, in-person meetings to learn more about the master plans for residents who have no access to the internet to provide feedback. Um, is there any plans in the future for that or? Well, we had originally planned to probably return back to the city 
in-person meetings. But we are also working in combination with the health orders and looking at when we can safely do so. Um, for some of these information, if there is lack of access in terms of your, your ability to connect on the internet, I think that we'd be able to send some of those documents to you. But um, I think that as we open our general plan right now, if you're thinking about um, our, there's a master plan that was approved in 2011. There's affordable uh, housing plan and elements um, that are being impacted right now with um, ABAG. And at the regional level, we're looking at new housing um, assessment numbers for us. Um, but if, there, if that is the information you're looking for, we could probably connect you with some of our resources and be able to better walk you through that. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to, before we take the next question for the mayor, I just want to remind you that um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat room because uh, we won't be taking questions uh, with raised hands. So um, here's another question for, uh, circling back to the homeless issue is in the RVs was that um, three months ago, they were asked to move off Albrey and they did, but they, re they have returned. Um, should we notify City Hall again? Well, they would, there's a couple of different things. One, I wanted to encourage people that we have also launched last year a customer relationship management system, which is you know an app, which I think many people like to use. And I'd love for people to try to use that either on the website or on their phones. It's the Fremont app and it allows people to initiate a request for service and it then better directs it directly to the department. And you can actually follow your ticket along to see where it is in the process. And that's something that better empowers people. And we have a tutorial for that information. Um, and regarding someone moving back, um, that's one of the challenges we have with code enforcement is that there are certain laws that we have to comply with, but we are, uh, if you could contact through code enforcement or through the app, that allows us to better understand what the situation is. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, can you address the senior housing with section 202 and section 811? I think that's better addressed by our uh, human services department and we can okay. have them follow up with you directly on that. But we are building um, increased senior housing. And in fact, that's why we also launched our Age Well Center because that we saw that the population from our past studies as being one of the top ARP age-friendly cities in the United States, um, we noticed that there was an increase of that and that's why we've built more senior and age-friendly services. Perfect. Okay. And then also she was provided, um, or this person, I'm sorry, I don't know, this uh, provided with an email to address that question as well. So um, is there a teacher shortage at FUSD? If so, how is it being addressed? Um, I, I apologize. I read in the newspaper, much like all of you, that there has been some impact on teachers in terms of shortages and also in substitutes, which was in the article, I think earlier this week with our superintendent Kamek. Um, the city is actually a separate entity from the school district, and I've had the pleasure of representing all of you in the past on the school district, but um, I am not involved with the hiring of that. What we can do is much like any other city is try to provide different types of housing and different affordability levels. And um, one of the things that when you look through some of our housing development the last couple of years, we have actually built um, the most low-income housing in our city's history, and we're trying to continue to expand that as we look at different types of transit-oriented development that help facilitate that. But um, please follow, and you can sign up for the list if you're interested in learning about affordable housing or senior housing. You can sign up through our website or through the apps to be able to get notified of those listings as they become available. Thank you. And again, I just wanna remind people to post in the chat room. And also if there's very uh, direct questions about um, specific things, um, you are being provided by the city staff with um, resources in the chat room as well. So as, as the mayor is speaking, the city staff is also following up on these. So you may get an answer that way. Um, mayor May, do you know how many homeless people are currently residing in Fremont? Has the population, has the homeless population increased or reduced comparing to 2020? Well, normally in the past, we have done a point in time count and it happens every other year. And I personally participated in the ones in 2016, 2018. And in 2020, due to the pandemic, we weren't able to do that in person. Um, I know that from this previous two studies, we went from about 445 individuals to 608. And judging from the impacts in surrounding cities and what we're seeing, I would estimate that it probably has gone up. 
but because of the COVID restrictions, we have not been able to go out and personally count. What I also wanted to note is that we've greatly increased our resources in the last couple of years for the homeless. Originally, when I started as the mayor, we had the homeless warming winter shelter. Now we have it open from November through um, March every day instead of just days where it's inclement weather. We also have added the Clean Start Mobile Hygiene Unit, which allows for better dignity and health and wellness, mm -hmm. especially in this time period, to be able to shower and also to be able to provide laundry services. And then finally, our Housing Navigation Center. And we're looking forward to working with our um, faith-based organizations on implementing safe parking in the next year. Um, but those are just some of the things that we're hoping to be able to implement. I've seen our numbers, like I said, I'm estimating off the top of my head what I'm seeing that it's probably increased, but I really won't know until we go out to count. The other thing I wanted to mention, we mentioned earlier was the MET team. And I have to really thank those efforts from our Health and Human Services Department. Our hum Department of Human Services in this time period have reached out to a lot of the homeless and have been able to help us in in partnership with other agencies, whether it's our fire department or our own resources to be able to get more people connected to services and resources. And while we are seeing an increase, just to let you know from 2018 to 2020, while some other surrounding cities had seen increases of up to 20 uh, to 50%, I think ours was roughly about 20 some percent. Um, so it's not perfect, but we are trying the best to stem it. And the, one of the best ways is to provide resources that prevent people from becoming homeless first and to get those wraparound services initiated prior to the homelessness. So that's why the program that we mentioned earlier during this discussion about providing rental housing assistance, which is still currently available, the fact that we have provided over 8 million to over 580 some families, that includes rental housing assistance for back due rents, for future rents if they qualify for up to three months, and then also for back due utilities this allows us to help people who qualify to be able to stay housed. And that's the purpose of the program is to ensure people not become unhoused and not become homeless or unsheltered, unhoused. Thank you, Mayor May. Lots, um, lots of good resources available there. Um, here's a question about uh, what is the current state of city unfunded liabilities? What efforts are being made to pay these obligations down? And how do we compare with other California cities of our size? And there, just before you start, um, there sure. was also the compliment that you made a wonderful presentation. Wanted you to know that. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So when it comes to unfunded liabilities, I wanted you to know that our city, a couple years ago, our council made a decision to pay down our own unfunded liabilities. And that is something that as we get our funding back, it is a commitment that I still strongly believe in, that we have to be thoughtful in terms of how we are, as much as in the past, it's been difficult to make cuts when we restore programs, we have to be thoughtful of that too, to be able to plan ahead. And I don't have all the data in front of me right now. I know it's on our website and I'd be happy to have that resource shared with you, but that is a commitment that our city council made. And it's one that I believe we still carry. If you're ever interested in learning about our city's priorities and values, we update our legislative priorities every year at a council meeting. And we also hold a retreat, which I think is very important. Um, in the past, it hasn't always been every year, but I strongly believe that whenever there's a change in council, even by one person, it's important that we, along with our staff and leadership team in the city of Fremont, connect to see that we are working on goals together and to make them smart, measurable, accountable, responsible, transparent goals. And so some of those include the finance information that you're asking for. I invite the public to join with us. We start our budget discussions in January and that will include different items. Um, and you can see that as we build towards the budget, which is finally approved in June, because we start a fiscal year in July. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, these, I've gotten a few comments from the same person about the master plans and then um, what master plans have been passed or underway during the current pandemic. And I think um, the real concern from this person is that let me find what she said. There's a couple um, master plans, so I'm not sure which one they're referring to. There's the housing master plan that, you know, the general plan that we make for the city that was approved originally in 2011, that we then update with our housing element. There's the broadband master plan. There is our master park plan. Um, so there's a couple different ones. I'm not sure which plan they're referring to. But when they mentioned on our website. 
Oh, uh, um, I'm sorry to interrupt right. you. One they mentioned was parks, but then they also said, unless there is an immediate urgency, no master plans, mm -hmm. and I'm not just talking about parks, should be finalized until in-person meetings are feasible. Um, and the reason behind that was uh, it's not as easy to get diverse opinions unless we're in person as opposed to virtually. So, um, well, I wanted people to know that if you can't make it in person, besides dialing, besides coming in via Zoom, which we often have many speakers, there is the option by phone. And if you want to make a public comment, you would hit star nine. The other option is also to send emails or to send a letter because all correspondence that is sent to us is also received by our city clerk and recorded as part of our public communications and are set, kept on file for us. Great, thank you. Those are all the questions I have. I, there were a couple more, but they were very much um, answered by the staff. They were very direct questions about who to contact for what. And your staff, as usual, is uh, all over it and <laughs> has been answering the questions um, very diligently. So um, I think and, uh, I want to ask our IT team if you will, after we finish, um, keep this up just a few more minutes so that people can make sure that they write down the email addresses and the websites that have been posted for folks. Um, so we'll leave this up for just a few more minutes. Sure. But um, with that, I we are out of questions, Mayor, and um, thank you for a really good, great presentation about things that are going on. Well, before we close, I wanted to thank the Chamber of Commerce, our historic neighborhood business districts, and most importantly, um, our, our community members, all of you. Um, this has been a very challenging time, and I know that so many people have had direct impacts, whether it's loss of family members, loss of businesses, or just a complete change in how we work and how we study. And I'm here with you and understanding so much of these challenges, but that's why I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to communicate with all of you. And I wanna thank the Chamber of Commerce today for hosting this meeting, as well as the sponsors who've helped make this possible. I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to meet with you in person and to be able to gather as we slowly work together to rebuild and reopen. And I know that this is a, a tough time, but I have confidence and faith um, that we will be able to get through this and get through this better because we work together. And so just want to say Fremont is definitely stronger when we work together. And in these challenging times, um, I ask that you be kind to one another, to be thoughtful, and then to help one another whenever possible. And thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and just so that you know, because I know that uh, Quite often, you don't hear the compliments, but there's a lot of great work, mayors. Thank you. More power to you kind of comments on there. So um, just want to make sure you know that you are appreciated for all the hard work you do. Um, before we sign off, though, I do want to congratulate our new city manager, Karina Shackelford. We are extremely excited to work with Karina. She's um, been serving our city for a very long time, and we've always had the utmost respect for Karina. So we're looking forward to that, as okay. well as our new police chief. Sean Washington, we're excited that Sean has come on board in a, a leadership position as he has. He's always served us very well in the past and um, has been a real friend of the chamber in terms of working with us on events. So we're excited about that. Well, I wanted to say, finally, I also wanted to thank Cheryl Golden who helps me every year with this wow. and also for all of our city staff. I know many of you have adapted to how we work with our community members and how we work with one another. And I can say that all these projects and things that we're talking about today are a reflection of the efforts of our staff, of our fellow council members currently and past, and that it's something that we hope to be able to carry on as we move forward. So thank right. you. Great, great. I just want to remind everyone that uh, our final Street Eats of the season is tomorrow night. It starts at 5 p.m. It will be a Halloween celebration, not to the extreme that we've had it or not to the... Um, size that we've had it in the past, but we still want to make sure that we have that time together as a community. The uh, event starts at five and then we're having a costume contest um, and a costume parade at 7 p.m. And you will see our mayor there as one of the judges. So we hope that you will be able to join us and everyone keep your fingers crossed that so we can get through it without rain. And uh, not that uh, rain is a bad thing for our city or our, our state right now, but um, it can start at nine o'clock, 9.01. Um, and with that, I want to, again, thank our mayor. I uh, want to remind everyone that we will be posting a recording of this 
online at the Chamber's website tomorrow, probably by noon, and then the city will be posting it as well as soon as they're able to get the uh, captioning done for it. So um, give us a little bit of time on that to uh, get everything set up and uh, we, you'll be able to see it again or review it. And one last thing, we do have a mixer coming up on October 27th, just a small event. It will be hosted by the Connect to Secede Connection Club. It will be held at our office, the Fremont Chamber of Commerce office from five to seven. So you're invited to attend that as well. Um, with that, I'm going to say- Do we have to draw a prize? I wasn't sure if that was happening today still for- we weren't planning on it. Okay, sorry. But, but we will be posting very soon the dine out. Uh, yes, that's what, time, that's what I thought was today. But. Oh, oh, we did talk about that. My apologies. We, we just haven't, uh, we're still trying to record well, all the seats. That okay. just means we just have to eat more great foods locally. <laughs> our local businesses. And I encourage everyone to manja manja and right. to eat more. So Excellent. Um, again, thank you so much, Mayor, for your time. We are looking forward to 2022 and uh, hosting you at the State of the City in uh, person. And we're very excited about the Burger and Brew, the Festival of the Arts, starting Street Eats again, all in person in 2022. So could not be more excited than that. Um, again, great presentation, very excited. Thank you for your leadership for our city and uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Again, we will be leaving this up so that you can copy down any um, emails and websites that were posted by the city staff. Also, if you're in Zoom, you can right click on the, the bottom. There's a, usually in the menu, there's an option to save chat. And that way you can capture all the transcripts and the comments that, that oh. were, those, those are, were given to them, so. Okay, great IT from our, great IT tip from our mayor. Okay, thank you so much. And we'll be seeing everyone soon. Thank you. Take care, bye. Be bye -bye. safe and be well.